It's time to rank all 13 of the Halloween movies. Let's get into it. Well, sometimes that is better. Hey everybody, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. Today we're talking all about the 13 Halloween films, and before we rank all of them, I'm gonna need y'all to like this video, subscribe, do all of that, because I would just greatly appreciate it. It would certainly help this little fella out. I also just want to say throughout this video, there will be spoilers for Halloween Ends, just in case you haven't seen it yet, so just a little disclaimer, why not? Coming in 13th place, last and certainly least, is Halloween Resurrection. Halloween Resurrection is the epitome of a cash grab, where they retcon the awesome ending to the previous film, just to make another movie. Because as Mr. Krabs would say from Bikini Bottom, money. Where H2O's screamy tone kinda works for me, this film just doesn't and ends up falling flat in almost every respective area. The new characters are stereotypical archetypes to the time that just kinda suck and feel generic, Michael Myers looks the absolute worst, and Busta Rhymes kung fu's Michael Myers in this movie? If you thought the Scream stuff was out of place, I mean, come on with that. Listen, I'm all about this franchise getting kinky and weird all day every day, but this movie is just a blatant cash grab and never really tried to do that weird nasty thing like some of the other sequels in this franchise do so well. This was just clearly made for money, and that's why I just don't like it. I can't respect lazy filmmaking like that. Coming in 12th place is Halloween 5, another movie that just doesn't feel very focused and kind of ruins the Thorn trilogy for me. The only thing that I hate more than lazy filmmaking is a director who just does not care about the well-being of his actors. <laughs> there was some awful behind-the-scenes shit with this movie, which is why it ranks so low for me, and also the product is just not all that great. This is a very, very rushed movie. It is all over the place, and they tried to fix it, cobble it all together with some crazy editing shit that just does not work at all. I think there was an idea for where Halloween 5 was going to go, but it didn't ultimately go that route. This movie had four writers, which as we know from the next movie on this list, is never a good thing. This is one of the many movies in this franchise where you can feel all the creatives involved trying to tug it a certain way, and then it just keeps going back and forth and back and forth. It ends up being so overly overcomplicated, it just kind of fucking sucks. There are multiple plot points that don't make make sense in this film, but the, when you have your opening scene not making any sense, how can the rest of the film be good? And to talk about that for a moment, we start off right where we left off in Halloween 4, Michael is still sliding down the river, which is very comical and goofy to watch, but then he meets a kooky old man and sleeps at his place for like a year. No, I'm not exaggerating if you haven't seen Halloween 5 yet, that's how the fucking movie starts. And no, I'm not exaggerating, he literally sleeps for a year. Donald Pleasance is always a pleasure watching in these movies, and that kind of saves this film a little bit for me, which is cool. And Danielle Harris would be great in this movie, you know, if she spoke. This is unfortunately one of the many movies in this franchise to ruin its respective timeline. Coming in 11th place is Halloween Ends, and I can't believe I didn't rank this one lower. Remember a second ago when I was talking about ruining its respective timeline? There you go with Halloween Ends. Halloween Ends is also a cash grab that blatantly rips off other John Carpenter movies just so that they can have an ending to their trilogy. I'm convinced that David Gordon Green only made this movie so that he could focus most of his time and efforts towards the new Exorcist film that comes out next year. I genuinely hope he gets kicked off that project though because of how lazy this film was. I know just about everything has been said that needed to be said about Halloween Ends, but I just think about how I would kill to be in David Gordon Green's position, to be making a Halloween film like, that's insane, and for him to waste that like this, I just can't respect a filmmaker like that. I'm down for paying homage all day every day, but this movie needs to be cited for plagiarism, that is how close this thing is to Christine. It's the same movie, and every single main character's arc that was set up perfectly in the last two films is thrown out the window to focus on a character that is basically just Arnie Cunningham again. This movie only told me one thing, and that's that David Gordon Green fucking loves Christine, I guess. Corey Cunningham is the very worst character in this entire franchise, and it really sucks that they had to blow this timeline, which could have been the best. The only reason I put this film above five in Resurrection is because yes, the opening scene did get a reaction out of me and it was shot pretty well. But that's really the only positives I can attribute to this movie, which is pretty damn sad considering the awesome team of people behind this flick. Coming in 10th place is Halloween 2007. Now Rob Zombie's first dive into the Halloween franchise is pretty lackluster to me and kind of just is the exact same plot of the original and then focuses on very weird things and expands on them. I don't know why we 
we had to spend like an hour focusing on Michael's backstory and how he broke out of prison when that was something that was done in like five minutes in the first movie. But I guess that was something Rob Zombie was really interested in here. In all fairness, there was a shit ton of studio interference with this movie, so not everything bad about this film can be attributed to Mr. Zombert, but the wall-to-wall -wall brutality in this movie leaves you breathless and exhausted. There is no point where you can just kind of like chill out for a second and then be surprised by something again. By the time you get to like the 30th kill, it's just not shocking anymore. And the dialogue in this movie is fucking atrocious. Like, I love Rob Zombie all day every day, but I just don't think the guy can write dialogue. In a slasher movie, you have to have at least one character you like, and I don't like any of the characters in this movie. Like, literally every character is awful. Thankfully, that would be fixed by the sequel. Coming in ninth place is Halloween H2O, a movie that honestly has grown on me, but still has some glaring problems. Halloween H2O hops on the trend train and kind of gets all screamy in this weird sequel. Unlike Resurrection, it actually kind of works for me here by nodding to some of the other movies at the time that it was clearly inspired by. It even features some meta humor throughout and has some really nice cameos that are meta in themselves. Janet Lee, for instance, who is Jamie Lee Curtis's mom. This movie, though, unfortunately has a lot of weak points, featuring the grossest looking Michael of all time, who has a CGI mask in this film. And that's even worse than Alien Michael from Halloween 5, and that is saying something, let me tell you. The kills feel a little out of place in this movie and are even too over the top for a scream-like Halloween sequel, and you can also feel the absence of Donald Pleasance in this film. This movie, though, features one of the most triumphant third acts in the entire franchise, which I really fucking love. And we can just ignore the fact that Resurrection retcons it. Fuck that movie. Coming in eighth place is Halloween 4, a very underrated flick in this franchise that, although can get slow at times, is still very fun. Although this is a borderline remake of the original, Halloween 4 still finds a way to make itself its own. The plot is nothing to write home about in this film, but Donald Pleasance gives one of his best performances in the entire franchise here, which is so over the top, it's so silly, but it's so fun to watch. When he is on screen, my eyes are glued to the TV. This is also the introduction of Jamie Lloyd to the franchise, played by the wonderful Danielle Harris. I would love to see her return to the franchise at some point in the future, maybe not as the same character, but just, you know, playing another role. Now that Jamie Lee Curtis is kind of done with this franchise, Franchise, let's put the spotlight back on Danielle Harris. Fuck it. This movie is a lot more bleak than its predecessors too, which makes it stand out in my opinion. Although I really enjoy that element, it does make this film feel a lot more hopeless. And Halloween Kills borrows a lot of the ideas from this film, and in my opinion does them a lot better, even though a lot of people effing hate Tommy Doyle. It's still better than the half-assed mob scenes we get in this flick. Coming in seventh place is The Curse of Michael Myers, or Halloween 6. Curse is weird as all hell and not everything works for me here, but for the most part, I really enjoy this flick. It's my favorite of the Thorin trilogy. This film tries to salvage some of the stuff that was set up in 5, which like I said earlier, is just a mess and over overall just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but Curse does a pretty good job at making sense of it. And for that, I really respect this movie. This movie is also forced to get sillier, which is the big thing that kind of doesn't work for me at times. The Howard Stern-esque character, just his humor falls completely flat for me. I'm just not a fan of that at all. But Paul Rudd stealing babies is always going to get a chuckle out of your boy. Coming in 6th place is Halloween Kid. Kills, the most overhated film in this entire franchise by far. Halloween Kills is a blast from the start to almost the finish, and I think 90% of it is pretty fucking great. Kills is Michael's movie, featuring his all-time highest kill count and also some of his most gruesome kills. I'm pretty pissed that they retconned the light bulb death in this because that was probably one of my favorites throughout this entire flick, besides Cameron's death that is also super visceral. Every character gets the shine here, and there is a lot of plot stuff despite what you hear on the internet here. One of my favorite things set up in this film is Hawkins' backstory with Michael, which is so emotional and so upsetting, and unfortunately goes nowhere in the sequel, which I know you probably heard me say a million times at this point. It's a shame because that flashback sequence is probably one of my favorite things we got from this new trilogy of flicks, and like I said, went nowhere. But I can appreciate the attention to detail here, which is phenomenal and maybe the best recreation of an old movie I have ever seen. The ending does get a little choppy at points, but besides that element, I really love this movie, and it is an absolute blast with every rewatch. Oh boy, and here's some fighting words with this one. Coming in fifth place is Halloween 2 from Rob Zombie. The black sheep of the Halloween family, which I would argue is not even a Halloween film, this movie is pretty fucking awesome, actually. Like I said, in no way is this a Halloween movie. In fact, I don't even think it features the iconic theme from the franchise, but this movie still ends up being something really cool and one of Rob Zombie's best. The difference between this movie and Halloween ends is that this isn't just blatantly ripping off something else. This is its own story 
story. And that's why I like it. It's different and weird, but it, you know, does something original instead of what Halloween Ends did. The awful characters from the first movie who I just had such a hard time rooting for actually become a little lovable in this movie, and you really feel bad for Brad Dorif when he is crying in agony over his daughter's death. It is one of the most emotional moments in this entire franchise, and I love it. I tear up almost every time. As for the dream shit, yeah, okay, that gets pretty weird, but it works with the context of this film, which focuses thematically on dreams. And I know the overly tragic ending is really off-putting to some, but I think not every story has to end with a happy ending, and that's what I like about this flick. Coming in fourth place is the OG Halloween 2, which may be one of the best movies in this entire franchise. Admittedly, it does have some dumb stuff going on. The plot injection of Laurie and Michael being brother and sister I think is completely pointless and irrelevant, and the one EMT is a fucking creep that keeps coming into Laurie's room. Get the fuck out of there, dude! But I love mostly everything else about this film. The killer new soundtrack, Dick Warlock is Michael Myers, and some of the kills are fucking gnarly. The hot tub? Hell yeah, baby. Lori may be bedridden for most of this movie, but unlike Halloween Kills, she actually gets to do something in the third act, which is why I kind of don't mind it. And the third act is a guilty pleasure of mine. This is one of my favorite third acts of the entire franchise. It is so tense and ends in a very fiery ball of explosions. Absolutely coming in third place is Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, another banger that is just not a Halloween movie whatsoever. Season of the Witch is all about masks that kill people and turn your head into a bunch of bugs and snakes. Where that power emanates from is Stonehenge, too. I mean, how much crazier can it get than that? This is one of the best B-movies ever made, in my opinion, and I fucking love it. It is a very bizarre movie, but it always holds your attention, especially when Tom Atkins has every single female character in this movie gawking over him. What the fuck? It's a really bizarre movie, and it's almost kind of like looking into another dimension because of how off everything is throughout this flick. But I think that kind of serves something for it. And the last scene of this movie is one of the most tense sequences, I think, in this entire franchise. When Tom Atkins is screaming on the phone to cancel the broadcast, cut it, cut it off. Oh my God, that's so good. Coming in second place is Halloween 20. 18. I may have lost a lot of respect for David Gordon Green as a filmmaker after the very lazy Halloween ends, but this film is easily the best sequel in this entire franchise. It is as influential as it is well-written, and we've seen just about every other franchise borrow this idea and do it in their own way recently. The new characters are set up so well, especially Andy Matichak's Allison Nelson, and I also fucking love Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie, portraying a very different Laurie Strode. The score done by John Carpenter himself, as well as Cody Carpenter and Daniel Davies, is one of my all-time favorites, and it's an easy top three from John Carpenter for me personally. This is a killer flick, I just wish they didn't blow this timeline. This easily had the potential to be the best and definitive timeline for the Halloween franchise, and they just fucking blew it with ends, which definitely makes me feel a little lesser towards this film, unfortunately. And of course, the number one is Halloween. I mean, this movie is just so much better than its sequels, I'm sorry. This is the film that popularized the slasher genre and is so iconic. The way they show Michael stalking Lori throughout the first two acts of this film is why that kind of goofy third act still works for me, because it's terrifying the way they set it all up. I would argue all day every day that a good setup is more important than the actual kill itself. So the fact that this movie sets up that third act so well, it kinda doesn't matter that Annie's death is super goofy. It ends up still being terrified because you are scared shitless of this fucking boogeyman that's stalking the neighborhood. The score is one of my all-time favorites, immersing you in this world of zany characters and creepy shots. Jamie Lee Curtis plays a badass final girl, and Donald Pleasance steals the show with some ridiculous quips throughout. <laughs> Once again, Donald Pleasance is so goofy throughout this entire franchise, and he is just such a pleasure to watch whenever he's on screen. There's so much to love about this 70s classic, obviously I can't fit it all in this tiny ranking video, unfortunately. Obviously, you guys won't rank the Halloween films the same way I will. There are 13 of these movies, and oh my god, everyone feels very differently about all of them. So leave me what your list is down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this brand new Halloween ranking video talking about all 13 of the films now. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content in the future. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member by clicking that join button on my page. Thank you guys again for watching, and as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.